हेलो एवरी वन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर हेल्थ राइट ओके सो टुडे विल बी स्टार्टिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ नो नो फॉल्ट लाइबिलिटी बिफोर स्टार्टिंग यू नो इट बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आस टू अंडरस्टैंड एज टू वाई वी आर इवन स्टार्टिंग दैट टॉपिक वट्स द रिलेवेंस ऑफ दैट टॉपिक वेन आई एम सेंग नो फॉल्ट लाइबिलिटी आई एम श्योर इट्स गिविंग यू अ काइंड ऑफ कॉनिटेशन that even if you have taken care while doing a particular act you are doing that act very reasonably with full uh, care uh, but still you are held responsible for the same okay so even if the defendant is not negligent mm. or have no intention to cause any harm still he can be made liable for the same that is the concept of no fault liability within it we'll be reading or studying two sub topics which are strict liability and absolute liability well today's focus will be on the topic of strict liability uh, <clears throat> now uh, in a larger perspective when we'll be studying strict liability and further proceed to the concept of absolute liability it becomes relevant to understand that the concept of strict liability it originated in the 19th century okay it originated from the case of ryland versus fletcher in the year 1868 and now what we talk of generally is the concept of absolute liability from the case of m c mehta a uh, reason that we attribute to the importance of this topic is the present context in which the present day in which we are living you know we are coming across a number of developments developments if you see in terms of information and technology right we are talking of data as data is everything it has become everything now similarly we are talking of artificial intelligence you know we are talking of internet of things uh, we are talking of uh, virtual currencies cryptocurrencies we are talking of uh, genetic data genetic coding and modification similarly uh, there is also a development in uh, industrial sector as well we are indulging into new activities day in and day out and we are looking for alternative forms of energy energy uh, storage and creation right so we are talking of nuclear energy as well nowadays so there's lot of development that is taking place now when all these developments take place you know we talk of what are the boon and the bane right so the disadvantages also are there and we need to take care of the liability which accrues out of these dangers right so something can be beneficial at the same point of time it could be harmful to us so therefore uh when we talk of the concept of strict liability we say that there are certain exceptions to it and these exceptions are absent when we talk of the absolute liability so how the concept developed from 19th century to 21st century what's the relevance of this particular topic what are the basic constituents of this particular topic and what all are the judicial pronouncements and legal issues concerned with this particular topic will be studying it so that is just an idea as to why are we concerned about this topic in law of torts okay so because if you see today we are talking of conservation of the environment its preservation we are talking of right to life right so all these are the major focus area or you can say uh, these are the area from which the rights not accrue but yes you can claim the source of your right to be here so therefore the strict liability and absolute liability concept in today's environment it becomes important okay now starting with the <clears throat> case itself 
the case of Ryland versus Fletcher and I am sure that all of you would have read it while your preparation for the CLAT exam but still uh, to tell you see I have also made a diagram here that here the Ryland is a person who was having a uh, mill and therefore he created a reservoir so that for the production of energy for running of his mill he wanted a source of energy and for that purpose he created a reservoir but he himself has not made the reservoir right herein he has uh, employed rather contracted some independent contractor and some engineers to construct that reservoir while they were constructing the reservoir there were certain disused mine shafts that were lying in that particular area which were not taken into consideration while they were constructing it and Ryland was also unaware about it because he has given the construction uh, to the, the work of construction to the independent contractors and engineers so therefore he was completely unaware as to what are the problems which are there on the site of the reservoir while the reservoir was being constructed when the water was filled in it it burst through the shafts and it flooded the plaintiff's coal mines the plaintiff here is Fletcher now he was having his coal mines near the land of the Ryland uh, and therefore he suffered damages because of the same so he definitely he brought the case before the courts of law and said that Ryland is responsible for the same Ryland took the plea that it was not his fault he was unaware he has given the uh, work to the independent contractors therefore he is he is not at fault but herein we generally cite the judgment of Justice Blackburn who was from the courts of Exchequer from the courts of Exchequer this case was taken into appeal to the House of Lords and therefore Ryland who was a defendant became a plaintiff here and therefore the name of the case is Ryland versus Fletcher but remember here although not very important because it is just a fact we need to remember the law but just for your knowledge because in most of the books and <clears throat> other videos you will see that uh, generally Ryland is considered to be the uh, plaintiff otherwise but in the first case when it came it was the Ryland who was the defendant means the Ryland was the person who was responsible for creating uh, or uh, for the f flooding of the Fletcher's coal mines okay so this was the issue that whether he should be made liable or not because he was taking the plea that he was completely unaware it was the act of the independent contractors now what the court has to say the court of exchequer has to say in this let us see now this is from your study material itself and <coughs> herein the court of mm -hmm. exchequer's judgment which was given by justice blackburn it is on the next page particularly was is being cited and it was being approved by the house of lords now what justice blackburn has given the law let us read it we think that the true rule of law is that the person who for his own purposes brings on his land and collects and keeps there anything likely to do mischief if it escapes must keep it in at his peril okay and if he does not do so is prima facie answerable for all the damage which is the natural consequence of its escape he can excuse himself by showing that escape was owing to the plaintiff's default or perhaps that the escape was the consequence of his major or the act of God. So the law which he has given is ki that the person who for his own purpose brings on his own land and collects and keeps there anything likely to do mischief if it escapes must keep it in his in at his peril. So, these three major constituents 
हम जब स्ट्रिक्ट लाइबिलिटी पढ़ते हैं विच आर दैट देर शुड बी अ डेंजरस थिंग एंड इट शुड एस्केप एंड सच शुड बी अ नॉन नेचुरल यूज ऑफ लैंड नॉन नेचुरल वील बी डिस्कसिंग इन डिटेल बट ऑल दीज थ्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूंट्स आर बींग गिवन इन द जजमेंट ऑफ जस्टिस ब्लैकबर्न एंड ही इज ऑल्सो गिविन द एक्सेप्शन एक्सेप्शन लाइक ही से कि इफ इन केस ही इज एबल टू शो दैट इट वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द प्लेटिवस डिफॉल्ट और इट वॉज एन एक्ट ऑफ गॉड दैन इन दैट केस द डिफेंडेंट मे नॉट बी लाइबल बट एज नथिंग ऑफ दिस शॉर्ट एग्जिस्ट हेयर इट इज अननेसेसरी टू इंक्वायर वॉट एक्सक्यूज वुड बी सफिशियंट द जनरल रूल एज अब स्टेटेड सीम्स ऑन प्रिंसिपल जस्ट देन ही इज गिविंग सर्टन इलस्ट्रेशन रीड इट द पर्सन हुज ग्रास और कॉर्न इज ईटन डाउन बाय द एस्केपिंग कैटल ऑफ इज नेबर और हुज माइन इज फ्लडर्ड बाय द वॉटर फ्रॉम हिज नेबर्स रिजर्वेयर और हुज सेलार इज इन्वेडेड बाय द फिल्थ ऑफ इज नेबर्स प्रीवी और हुज हैबिटेशन इज मेड अनहेल्दी बाय द फ्यूम्स एंड नॉइसम वेपर्स ऑफ इज नेबर्स अल्केलाई वर्कस इज डेमनीफाइड विदाउट एनी फॉल्ट ऑफ इज ओन and it seems but reasonable and just that the neighbor who has brought something on his property which was not naturally there harmless to others so long as it is confined to his own property but which he knows will be mischievous if it gets on his neighbors should be obliged to make good the damage which ensures if he does not succeed in confining it to his own property <coughs> but for his act in bringing it there no mischief could have accrued and it seems but just that he should at his peril keep it there so that no mischief may accrue or answer for the natural and anticipated consequence and upon authority this we think is established to be the law whether the thing so brought be beasts or water or filth or stench okay so this is the law that is given by justice blackburn and also being agreed upon by the house of lords because see here they are saying that my lords that there can be two things if it is a natural use of land then in that case the defendant will not be liable but if it is a non natural use of land then in that case the defendant would be liable now therefore in the para if you see here that my lords the principles on which this case must be determined appear to me to be extremely simple the defendants treating them as the owners or occupiers of the close on which the reservoir was constructed might lawfully have used that close for any purpose for which it might in the ordinary course of the enjoyment of land be used and if in what i may term the natural use of that land there had been any accumulation of water either on the surface or underground and if by the operation of the laws of nature that accumulation of water had passed off into the close occupied by the plaintiff the plaintiff could not have complained that the result had taken place if he had desired to guard himself against it it would have uh, be upon him to do so by leaving or by interposing some barrier between his close and the close of the defendants in order to have prevented that operation of the laws of nature so the idea the, the summary here is they are trying to say if you are using the water which is an ordinary course of the enjoyment of land in that particular case if water escapes then it is not the liability of the defendant it is the plaintiff who has to take care of his property and by whatever way he can now uh, similarly for the second para they are saying on the other hand if the defendant not stopping at the natural use of their close has desired to use it for any purpose which i may term a non natural use for the purpose of introducing into the close which in its natural condition was not in <clears throat> or upon it for the purpose of introducing water either above or below ground in quantities and in manner not the result of any work or operation on or under the land and if consequence of their doing so or in consequences of any imperfection in the mode of their doing so 
the water came to escape and pass off into the clothes of the plaintiff then it appears to me that which the defendants were doing they were doing at their own peril and if the course of their doing the evil arose to which i have referred the evil namely the escape of the water and its passing away to the clothes of the plaintiff and injuring the plaintiff then for the consequence of that in my opinion the defendants would be liable so when it is a non natural use of land in that particular case the defendants would be liable so this is the law that was laid down by justice blackburn in the code of exchequer and when the matter was taken into appeal the same was being affirmed by the house of lords now let us uh, specifically discuss as to what are the major constituents of the strict liability so first thing is that it should be a dangerous thing now dangerous thing will not always means that uh, you know it will be a wild uh, animal right uh, maybe just because of its very intrinsic nature you know even if it is your uh, water your gas your electricity which although seems to be for some certain useful purpose right but they because of their property of their very property that they may cause harm to the other person to any of the person because of this very intrinsic nature they are considered to be a dangerous thing okay then there should be an escape that is the second major constituent <clears throat> that there should be an escape escape therefore is very important now there is a case which is being generally discussed here that's the case of uh ponting versus nokes also that for example if there is a poisonous tree which is there on your own land or which you have planted for example and if the branches of that particular tree they protrudes outside and it the the fruit the poisonous fruit is being eaten by your cattle in that case then this is an escape and the defendant would be prima facie liable for this okay but what if your cattle goes to the land of the defendant where there this poisonous tree in that particular case the defendant will not be liable because there is no escape so this is a general understanding of the idea of escape in the third and which is the essence of this particular strict liability concept is the non natural use of land and we have to understand this non natural use of land or you can say dangerous thing together they cannot be read in isolation they have to be read together to understand the idea non natural use of land generally means something extraordinary use something which is very peculiar so say, there should be some special use which brings some increased danger to the others it should not be ordinary okay so if there is a use which is benefit for the general public but i think uh, these uh, words are just to confuse you so don't get confused by these words that if it is for the benefit of the general public then it will be a natural use of land let's uh, understand the idea only with respect to the two points that is when it is of such a nature that it may cause danger uh, increase danger to the lives of people or to the property of the people and is something which is not ordinary now in the case of frailin versus fletcher if you see the he was using water what is not something uh, dangerous but the creating of the reservoir and storing the water in such a large quantity was a dangerous act okay so the very idea that it should be a non natural use of land means something which is out of the way you are utilizing that particular commodity that object or you are creating such services which if not being taken care of could be proved to be harmful okay so that is a non natural use of land and there is another case for example it's a case uh, of kerala high court that is tc balakrishnan versus tr subramanian of the year 1968 now if you see at the time of diwali there are uh, <coughs> cracker shows that happen 
so in this case also uh they were using certain uh explosives for the purpose of that cracker show and instead of that cracker being going up in the sky it exploded and it harmed the people so the plea that was being taken by the plaintiffs here was that they have not themselves used that particular explosive rather it was being used by the independent contractors who were being specifically employed for this particular purpose so here the court has rejected that particular plea saying that when you are using the explosives actually you have to take the license of the concerned authorities and therefore the use of uh, explosive is not a natural use of thing it is something which is a non natural use even though you are using it at a festival time which sounds to be quite obvious that yes at during the festivals we do use such crackers or explosives but the thing is you will have to see the very nature of it which could prove to be very dangerous to the people and therefore the court said that no when you are using such things you cannot delegate the liability of such commodities onto some other third party the independent contractors it is an extra hazardous substance and therefore the duty to keep such a substance without causing injury to other is a non delegable duty and thus the independent contractor not the independent contractor but you shall be liable for the same okay so this is the idea of the no fault liability and in particularly strict liability okay now let us uh, directly come to the exceptions of the strict liability and because there are exceptions therefore we distinguish it with the concept of absolute liability well that will be studying tomorrow so the first exception is that when it is plaintiff's own default okay uh, i already told you the facts of the case of ponting versus nox which is a case of 1849 okay so it is generally being said that a man cannot increase the liabilities of his neighbors by applying his own property to such a special use whether for business or for pleasure so when it is plaintiff's own default in that particular case the defendant shall not be held to be liable now there is another important thing that i would like to emphasize here is that generally people question and uh, they are in doubt as to why this case was not a simple case of nuisance and even could be a case of uh, trespass or the case of negligence right why have we developed this new concept altogether that is of strict liability but you know it becomes very important to understand uh, that at that particular point of time there was uh, the beginning of the industrial era and uh, it was a kind of a duty that was casted upon the courts of law that they should come up with such uh, principles or such interpretation of the law that would be beneficial for the larger public right so therefore it is uh, rather a point to be appreciated about it that we should always focus and we should always keep ourselves updated and aware of the developments that are taking place in the society so that we can be a better citizen we can be a better lawyer and a better judge okay so therefore this fact has to be appreciated that when this case came actually before this case there were very conventional kind of cases that were coming on and that particularly fall into the category of nuisance but here and if you see the major thing that distinguishes the case of rylan versus fletcher with the cases of nuisances that that particular thing will not only affect your normal uh, life or leisure but it is of such a nature it is so dangerous that it is a non natural use which you would otherwise not do that it will affect the life of the other people right so that is the major uh, distinguishing feature 
of this strict liability tort from the tort of nuisance and what is the difference of strict liability with the negligence that has been explained in the case also but just to tell you that you know in case of negligence there is a duty which is casted upon you then there is a failure of that duty and the damage is being caused and you know there is some kind of an awareness in the faculties of the mind that if i would have acted this way right this thing may not happen so there is this kind of awareness and also there is this plea which is available to the defendant that he has taken all the reasonable care at that point of time and he has acted just like a reasonable man but in the cases of strict liability there is no such defense available to the defendant so even if he has taken all the reasonable care he has acted like a prudent man but still if he is using such <clears throat> dangerous thing on his own land which escapes and harms the third party then in that case he would be held liable irrespective of the fact that you know he has whether any intention to cause harm or whether he was negligent or not that should not be taken into consideration so this is the major idea and that is how we call it to be no fault liability so this emergence of new principles of law is a very appreciating factor which should be appreciated rather than being criticized as to why a new tort altogether okay so well apart from it let's come to the other exception which is the act of god which i have already studied when we were reading the general exceptions which is also known as vis major okay and we studied the case of nicolas versus maslan if you remember that uh, in this ad particular case this uh, person has actually created a <coughs> A reservoir, and there was a lot of rain. Rain of that magnitude has never happened before, and it was for the first time that. <coughs> sorry, it was for the first time that it rained so heavily that the <coughs> embankments that were constructed by him for the artificial lake were actually. <coughs> they gave away, and uh, therefore uh, the entire area was flooded. okay so the act of god could definitely be one of the major exception when uh, you are uh, defending yourself from the case of strict liability but in india specifically in the cases of uh, uh death due to uh, electric wires when it falls because there is a rain or a storm it is generally being uh, held to be a no defense so the act of god or vis major is not considered to be a defense in these kind of cases so court has generally gone with the idea of strict liability that we will not accept the defense that because it it rained so heavily and therefore the pole fell down and therefore uh, there was a <coughs> pilferage of electricity and therefore the other party suffered so here in the courts have given this idea that in these cases it's the electricity boards who will be held responsible why so because you know these are the acts in india you know you are very much aware the kind of facilities that are being provided that uh the kind of infrastructure which is there for making available of these public utility is very fragile okay so therefore it is something which is very obvious you know a simple act of rain and uh, storm it's something which is very common in indian circumstances and therefore if something this like this happens that the pole falls down and somebody gets electrocuted because in the time of rain it's a very common <coughs> happening that takes place in that case it's the state it's the electricity board of any particular area or the state that will be held responsible so we have this case of mp electricity board versus shell kumar where in this shell kumar is actually the widow of joginder kumar who was electrocuted while he was returning from the factory he was uh, he was on his bicycle and uh, because it was raining he could not see that there was a <coughs> uh, electric wire that was lying on the road and uh, the moment he uh, touched it uh, when he was going uh, on his bicycle he was electrocuted so in this case the plea that was being taken by the board was number 1 
that because it rained so heavily there was storm that the pole fell down and they could not uh, foresee the event and therefore could not prevent it and the second reason given by them was that there is a possibility that there was an act of the stranger that somebody might have for the purpose of uh, uh, pilferage of electricity for using it for the, his own purpose might have uh, cut down that particular electric week, uh, electric wire and therefore uh, the electricity board could not help it so both the defenses were struck down in this particular case saying number one that definitely in India we are aware of the situation and the electricity board should also be aware of the situation that such things such rain and storm which is a common phenomenon should be taken care of and second thing is that this act of pilferage by a stranger uh, could not be a defense also in this case because whenever this thing happens that somebody is cutting down the wire for his own purpose then in that case there should be some system that the uh, electricity should be automatically cut off the current should have been automatically cut off so therefore it was the responsibility of the electricity board itself to take care of the same okay so act of stranger is the same same case and they have said that supplies of electricity had added duty suppliers of electricity had the added duty to take care <coughs> of all the measures to prevent the escape of such energy or ensure that wires snapped would not remain on road because uses of such road would be under the peril. Now, other third exception to the rule is the consent of the plaintiff. Consent of the plaintiff in these cases is actually implied where source of danger is for the common benefit of both the plaintiff and the defendant. Okay, for example, if there is installation of water systems in your houses, gas pipes and electricity, wirings, etc. And there are two people generally who are living in the same building on different floors. In that particular case, if there is, for example, there is a uh, water tank which is overhead, which is there on the first floor. And because it leaked, the person on the ground floor uh, suffers the damages to his property. In that particular case, the, uh, the defendant, the person who is living on the first floor shall not be liable because it was uh, consented that for your their own uh, utilization, such things are being required. Now, provided that definitely that there should not be any negligence on the part of the defendant. Uh, the other uh, defense that is taken uh, in the case of strict liability is statutory authority. Now, statutory authority means if you are doing an act which is sanctioned by the law, which is sanctioned by any statute, in that case, if you are suffering a harm or damage, then you cannot go against that particular body or authority. Uh, for example, there are circumstances wherein the... Uh, the board is supplying the water and there is a particular statutory duty for example the municipal mcd is supplying water for example and if the main pipe burst and it causes flood in a particular house then no action lies but definitely again in this case as well this defense will be <clears throat> although it is being said in number of cases there will be an absolute defense but i am here to say that no no defense can be absolute as such because it is for the court to decide as to under what circumstances that act has taken place so if there was any kind of negligence on the part of even the statutory authorities uh, that there was a need that they need to comply with certain situation the certain conditions which were a precondition imposed while exercising that duty then definitely they will have to show that they have taken all the reasonable care that was required before doing that particular act even though it was being sanctioned by the law the provisions of law okay so all these are the exceptions we discussed plaintiff's own default act of god act of stranger consent of the plaintiff or statutory authority <clears throat> now finally when we talk of the 
concept of strict liability you know uh, it is always important to finally conclude as to how the rule has developed you know what is the significance of the rule in today's time so as i told you you know the rule evolved in the 19th century and uh, you know under what circumstances it evolved and now we have progressed from strict liability to the concept of absolute liability specifically after the incident of the bhopal gas uh, leakage that happened in the year 1984 but strict liability if you see generally not only in india there have been many analytical studies that have taken place and they have analyzed that how far the rule of strict liability is applicable so for this they have said that it's not as relevant as it was in the 19th century and second that there are circumstances in which it could be invoked which are dwindling which means the circumstances are reduced to that particular sense what's the reason the reason is that there is a now a greater tendency of people to take out the insurance against the unlikely but foreseeable even so definitely the insurance companies are doing well in other countries well in india if you see the application of the rule we say the both in negative and the positive terms so there is a limitation of the rule in sense that you know when we talk of uh, storage of water you know that it's the liability of the government also to uh, provide <coughs> water to the uh inhabitants to provide water to its citizen and nowadays we also we are talking of the interlinking of rivers right uh you are very much aware of the indira gandhi canal that is there in rajasthan and there are areas in india which uh suffers from drought and there is not proper supply of water that there are no perennial rivers there are seasonal rivers so therefore and as you know that india being a welfare state and even otherwise that it's the duty of the state to take care of its citizens its subjects so whenever a state will be performing such kind of a duty definitely it will ha- it will have to take care of a larger public interest so while discharging its duties discharging the duties if <clears throat> if there is a uh, any uh, harm that is being caused to some particular individual or so certain section of the society then definitely uh, we say that we need to take care of the larger interest so so if in fact you can uh, give the example of the narmada bachao andolan well that is in a larger political uh, perspective but i'm just trying to say one thing is that some rule that is applicable in in a foreign country cannot be made applicable in india you know in the same way we need to analyze the situation or the circumstances in which that rule evolved in that particular country and its application in india so therefore uh, and india being an agrarian country you know that 85% of the population still is there in the agriculture sector and uh, therefore when there is a storage facilities for agriculture purposes or for uh, creating of such infrastructure for the supply of water to the common general public in that particular case the rule of strict liability has no as such application then if you say how the rule has been strengthened in india there we have this case of motor vehicles act it was uh, in news because it has uh, increased the liability of the people the fines have increased it was recently amended in the year 2019 now here it has a limited application that <clears throat> if uh, be- in cases of death because of the accident uh, the person will get an insurance of 2 lakh rupees compensation and in case of grievous injury the compensation will be rupees 50000 and uh, to this extent of compensation there is no need of pleading or establishing any fault on part of the owner or driver of the vehicle <clears throat> so there is uh, the concept of no fault liability is being rooted or you can say is being structured in the motor vehicles act to certain extent
so that is definitely uh, applicable in the case of india but uh, on a larger perspective when you talk we have a better version of strict liability and that is the concept of absolute uh, liability so definitely we'll be studying the topic uh, but before i would like you to read this particular topic in detail the notes that i have provided you and then we'll be dis- discussing the concept of absolute liability and i'll be sharing you with a video also wherein you will have to uh, i would like you to see although not that important but from a humanitarian perspective i would like you to see some documentaries on the bhopal gas incident okay so take care bye bye